Yeah, I'm, uh, my name is Jim Labine. I'm from uh, Argyle, Minnesota. Um, I'm 73 years old and I uh, was born in uh, Crookston in 48 and uh, joined the Air Force in uh, 1968. I, uh, I, delayed, I joined on the delayed enlistment plan because in September, so I could go in the date to go into service was the day after deer season was over. So that was my priority to make sure I got to go deer hunting. So you enlisted, where did you enlist at? Where did you go to to get? I think, you know, um, I can't remember actually. Um, I, it probably was Grand Forks or Fargo. I can't remember where I, where, where I went into. Um, I don't think there was anything local. I went and chose the Air Force. I, I uh, had gone to college for oh, a year, two years, and second year, due to a really creative uh, counselor, he signed me up. A full load was 20, 12 credits. He signed me up for 20 and 21 credits a quarter. So I ended up uh, dropping below a 2.0 uh, credit rating, so I knew something was going to happen. And that year I went to Wapitan. So my, I made some money working on the roads with when they did the tar tar roads in Argyll, and uh, then I went we went with them all summer. I made some money to add to add the, the dad's money so I could go to school in Wapitan. I wanted to go to computer school first year, but it, first year they gave you 21 credits. That was quite the concert you had. Well, no, second year. It was the second, second year. year. He said, "Oh, you you want to be in a computer program?" He says, "You should have been uh, should have been here last year." He says, oh, "I'll put you in the second year anyway." And my mother wasn't a college student, so she didn't know. And you know, I just ended up dropping a course and getting a D or whatever, and another one. So of course, and I, was, I had a little bit of a part-time job and walked in. But you now, and well, at that time too, um, uh, Lynn Swanson was there, and uh, so was uh, Wayne Bertrand, and uh, so was uh, Rivard uh, Royal. I used to ride back and forth from Fargo with the Royal, so. Okay. And we had a kind of a, we had, after a while we had a, uh, an apartment together, but I think we ended up in uh, in, the, in the school, you know, in, in those rooms, so. So, where did you, uh, did you fly to basic training? Where was basic training at? Oh, basic training. I flew out from Grand Forks to uh, San Antonio to uh, Lackland Air Force Base. And, uh, that was, I'd been, I'd flown before once, <laughs> so I had gotten a, when I was a kid, I got a, sold Grand Forks newspapers and I got an award to go to a Vikings game. So they shipped us to me and I think Kenny Heath here, we flew, flew to cities and we were in the same hotel as the Vikings and I think it was the Packers. Huh. It was a big deal, so. But that was the only time. Yeah, I flew to. So you San get Antonio. so you get the basic training, and what's basic training like? I, I, I don't. Well, I haven't done too many Air Force guys, so. Well, basic training. Uh, you know, you get in there, you get in, uh, get in a flight. Four, I think it's forty people. I'm not sure what the number is anymore. And uh, you're, of course, you bring you in at two in the morning, or something like that, and they you bunk you up and. About an hour after you think you're going to get to sleep, they'll wake you up with a fire alarm and make sure everybody gets outside. And they want to know that they're they want you to know that they're in control. So, so yeah, we get the the regiment, and it's all you have to learn how to take care of your bed and make sure your uniform is is ironed good and your shoes are shiny and you you got you're ready. You got to be on time every time if you're late you're in trouble and any marching oh yeah oh yeah we did lots of marching you got to know which is your left side and which is your right side and you know we did quite a bit of marching so mm -hmm. so what what were what were some of the things of basic training that sticks out in your mind that you did that you wouldn't you wouldn't do anywhere else oh, I don't know. you know it's just the fact that that you're you're I, I wasn't. I, I left home after college, but I mean, it was just. Uh, I knew what kind of to expect, you know. And it was, it's, it's, it's trying to get you to follow the orders and listen to what they're telling you, and you better listen right, otherwise, 
you know, like in, your uniform better be gig straight and uh, your buttons, you know, all of a sudden you're, you're one time I think it was marching and, and the TI stopped and he said, Airman, what's wrong here? And the button wasn't buttoned. He says, you don't need that on, so he cut it off. I had to sew it on by next next day myself. <laughs> so, you know, they're, they weren't they weren't abusive, uh, but they, they taught you what you had to do right or wrong. So, yeah, you know, it was good, good. I, you know, growing up in Argyle, you, you have you generally there's not a lot of people who fool around. You you follow the rules and you you knew right was right and wrong was wrong. And you really didn't do anything terrible. So yeah. you're kind of prepared. So you get uh, I suppose you had a ceremony graduation. Do you remember that? Well, before ceremony before before graduation we had our we had our I think it was an eight mile run or seven mile run we had to do and everybody ran it and. Uh, and there's this one, one of the guys was the last one, and we're all cheering him on. And he, uh, he was, he finally got to the end, and we cheered him on, he got to the end, he, f he fell down, he, he, he made it. We are all, but he never got up again. And all of a sudden, the, the T.I.'s come nudging him and stuff, and all of a sudden, all of a sudden, ambulances start coming. The guy died. Really? So they thought it was because of the shots we got that week. So they didn't let us go through. The next week, next day was the obstacle course test, and we didn't get to go through that because of that. So we were all looking forward to doing that, but that didn't happen, so. Yeah. But no, the, you know, the ceremony is not uh, not impressed with it, I guess. It was, you had to do, you marched and, and you, you got recognized, and I can't, I'm sure they, they must have given you something individually, I can't even remember. So a lot of these guys, when they do these interviews, their their details way way beyond what I remember. But uh, yeah, Air Force was was good. You know, okay, so. and so where did you go after basic? Well, I, in basic, I, I was supposed to go to. Oh, uh, well, when I went in service, I, I joined up to be a, a computer engineer to work on computers. And when I got to basic training, I took my physical again, and I flunked the color blindness test. So oh. So then I couldn't be in electronics. So then I took a programming test as to be a programmer. I missed that by one point. So then I took an operator course, which I passed, flying colors. An operator, computer based, operators for computer you know, operator. Okay. So I, I, I and I actually, in all fairness, it was probably a better of the two courses because programmers in at at the base where I was at. They sat around and read manuals for six months out of the year, and about maybe two weeks out of the year, they put patches on a, on software, and that was it. But uh, computer operators, you got to, you got to run the stuff, and you had to, you you had a, a full day. You're busy. How long was your school? Um, I want to say six weeks. Six weeks. Yeah. Okay. And four to six weeks, I can't remember exactly. It was a Shepherd Air Force Base. Uh, six eight five three zero. Oh. Funny you remember that. Shepard Air Force Base is in Texas. Texas. Okay. Yeah, yeah. My dad. My dad actually. My dad was in the Army Air Corps. He he was in Shepard also. So I, all these little things. And as it turned. What, what months was that that, that that you were there? When I when I was in Shepard. Remember. Oh, I joined in November. Let's see, November. November December. I don't know. Probably it, it would. Maybe it wasn't even. It wasn't six months because. Uh, Probably not that long, because I actually... I flew was it to, hot? Oh, yeah. Then you were there in the summer. <laughs> oh, yeah. It, it was hot. It was like, well, it, it was, you know, I can't remember. Well, basic training got me through Christmas and all Thanksgiving and all those things. And then um, after after that, the... Uh, went, I don't... I probably wasn't there six months, because I, I think I was in Massachusetts February or... What March. was in Massachusetts? That's where my Westover. Air Force, I got shipped to Westover for my for my base. That's a B-52 base, uh, Strategic Air Command SAC, and I was. Um, you were assigned there. Yeah, that's my. my no my, more. Sc you were done with when, school. When I, when I finished school, and that was that was where I went. I ran uh, Burroughs Computers, who was large scale IBM or Burroughs Computers, and uh, um, you know went there, and you know that was uh, pretty. Pretty interesting and it's, it's all, all good stuff. I I went had taken computer courses at Wapiton and it, the basic part of it, and plus all the training, it, it worked out good. We ended up after I don't know maybe 
six months or a year converting to a larger scale computer. And uh, that was a major thing. I think, we, I think I stayed awake for 32 hours just to go through the whole conversion. Make sure, you know, you don't want to lose something in the middle of it and turn it over to somebody else and find out that it didn't get done right. So, because otherwise you got to start over. Because that's kind of at the beginning of computers, isn't it? I mean, no, no, they haven't they been were, around very long, but. By then they were, they were the bigger, they're the ones that fill up this, right. this trailer. Uh, you know, but it, it uh, they, were, they were pretty good size. In fact, the disk drives were about four feet tall, and the, the actual disk. And it would go around and make, it's almost like a, almost sound like a jet engine. Yeah. That's where I lost a lot of my hearing. I get I get tinnitus real bad because it's a couple of squeals, different pitches in my ears. But um, you know what? That was um, you know, about it. And so how long were you there? I was there for um, three, see, two and a half years actually. After basic training and tr education, uh, I left there. For uh, uh, for Vietnam in uh, it was November of '71. Uh, November of '71, you got your orders for Vietnam. Funny story, yeah. Um, now, let me like now through basic training and uh, uh, AIT. Oh, yeah. Did did you know anybody? I knew nothing, nobody from there, but when I got at Westover, I had a, I had a buddy who had was from Massachusetts, and you know, your, your co-workers, you all, you know, You meet people. You yeah. meet people, and it was a good bunch, and, and uh, where's I going to go with this? You know, there's, there's people, and, and uh, oh, the uh, the situation, we had, one night we, I, I had a part-time job too, when I, when I didn't work, I had a I had time on my hands, I used to work at a clothing store, and, uh, one night I was at the clothing store and I had a friend of mine who was getting shipped to Hawaii. So I called over and says, how's the party going? He says, well, he says, there's a tall girl and a short girl. He says, bring a tall friend. So I went to the party and uh, actually I met my future wife. Really? Yeah. And uh, when she left the party with her girlfriend, they wouldn't let us out the door because her girlfriend was driving her dad's 55 Chevy, which was just in primer. It wasn't worth looking at. You know? something we'd like to see but uh, anyway so then I, I got her phone number from the lady of the house because she kind of dissed me and says well my dad's name's Hervey and uh, and it's in the book <laughs> so anyway I, I tried to find her the next night and the night after that I uh, on the Sunday morning I called her up and I said because I, I woke up late I want to go to the beach I used to go to the beach with an ex-GI ex-Air Force guy Jim Nowak and we go to an either uh, Musquamacate Beach or else uh, Cape Cod. You know, when you have the weekends off, you can do that. And um, so it was late, and I called some friends and girls I kind of knew, and they were all gone. I called up my future wife, Barbara, and I said, you know, uh, you want to go to the beach? She said, sure. So I went and picked her up, went to the beach, and had a really good time. And um, I was going to see her the next day, so I went to work at 11 o'clock at night, and and seven in the morning, and so when I ran, went to work, I ran a job that's called the C cards, and it's six months pre notification of orders. So it was, uh, whose card's in there? Mine. You're going to Vietnam in six months. <laughs> you saw it before you got the orders. Yeah, well, because I, I work in a computer room. Right, right. So, um, so the next day when I met her, I said, oh, you know, I had a good time. I'm really having fun with you. And I said, I want to tell you, I'm, I'm getting shipped off, so you don't want to waste time on me. He says, just, uh, I don't understand. And she says, uh, you're trying to get rid of me? I said, no. And she says, I'll wait for you. Which is, which now I think she regrets, but <laughs> a couple weeks, a couple months ago, she says, I don't know why I said that. But anyway, we, uh, I went home that, that uh, September, I think, to work on a farm for her. I used to do that. I used to go home and help them harvest in the, in the fall. Whenever it was June, July, June, whatever, September, and uh, I'd make enough, made enough money so I could buy a diamond ring. When I came back, and uh, we got engaged before I went to Vietnam. Oh, cool! And then you know, and then from from Westover, Westover was a B-52 base, and we had uh, it was quite a base. Um, when you say Westover, Westover Air Force Base in in Massachusetts. Yeah, and uh, that uh, it, it was. I guess there was a General Westover one time that uh, you know that. 
during the Bay of Pigs, that's where the B-52s were based out of. They were going to go over, over over Cuba, so they were on high alert and all those things. And we had a, we had some alerts when I was there too. But we uh, being in a computer room, we had uh, some alerts where we'd go to the Notch it was called. It was it was a bomb-proof shelter in a mountain, and you. you yeah, oh, had, well, we all had top secret clearances, and you go in, you, to get in, you, you get checked like three times, and then you go through the, the big doors like you see on 007 movies and stuff like that, and, and then you go down down about, I think it was three or four levels, and then there's a computer room there, and it's war games, and you don't know if it's real or not, and so, but that was pretty impressive, that was pretty impressive, and yeah. it gave you a... Oh wow! You know this could happen someday. You know, but you you never you're always ready. You don't know. But that was that was that was pretty good. So you're going to Vietnam. You flew out of. Well, actually, I flew. You know, I I came home. Me and my folks before I went to Vietnam. Right. And uh, being an old French old French family, you you always shake your hand, shake your dad's hand. Maybe you might give your your mama hug, but I mean at that time it was you know, very stoic. And I got on the plane. Actually, I, I left um, a few days early to go back to Massachusetts and surprise my wife to be. Um, and I flew out of there. But when I left, when I, I saw mom and dad, and I gave my dad a hug. It uh, it broke me up because I, you know I said I love you. And I don't think I've ever hugged my dad or told him I loved him before that in my whole life. And it's like, you know. I'm not in battle, but you know, like Dad said, it doesn't matter. Just don't volunteer for anything when you go over there. He said, this is, this is the battle zone. He, said, he was in World War II for four and a half years. He was in uh, North Korea, North, Korea, North uh, Africa, France, and Italy. Oh, yeah. And actually, I got too many stories. Actually, when he was in, in, uh, North, and when he was in Italy, he was in a place called Livorno. Actually, it was called Leghorn at that time. And my mother-in-law, who is Barbara, Barbara's wife, she was, my, my Barbara, Barbara is, a Barbara Hebert was her maiden name from Massachusetts. So I always told the Heberts, I used to go to Jeannie Hebert, <laughs> and it's, I told his parents, it's, you know, I'm so impressed with the Hebert girls, they had to marry one from the East Coast. <laughs> but uh, anyway, no, no, it, it was, a, it was a good time. I mean, I went to, you know, when I went to Vietnam, it was so, uh, uh, so, you get on a plane, right? Yeah. And was it all Air Force guys? Um, or was it? No, uh, I don't think so. It was all mixed. I think we we had Army, Air Force. I don't know if there was Marines on there or not, but it was a, a commercial plane. Yep. That we flew over, and uh, I think on the way over, I think we stopped in Hawaii. Mm-hmm. And uh, I don't know if we took another hop or not. But from the East Coast, you went to Hawaii? Well, actually, no, I, f I flew from the East Coast, might have went to the West Coast. Okay. And then from the West Coast to Hawaii. Yeah. yeah I think that's the way it went, but that's just the way the, the flights were. They weren't, weren't that far, you're correct. But, uh, you know, we stopped at, uh, one time on the way out, I think we stopped at uh, Hawaii, on the way back, I think we stopped at Guam. But uh, you never get much time. You must have more than one stop in Hawaii, right? Probably, uh, there was probably another Okinawa one. Okinawa or There's Wake something or something like, like that. that. There yeah. was some, you know, like I say, I don't remember all these uh, little things. Okay. It's like, it, it didn't impress me and it wasn't dangerous or anything. <laughs> when you hit the ground, how did it feel when they opened that door? Hot. Hot, muggy, kind of stunk a little bit. Where'd you fly into? Uh, Tansanut, Saigon, and I, actually that's my base, that's where I was stationed, and um, funny thing was, when the planes came down, my barracks was right across the street, <laughs> so I, I used to, uh, I used to hear the helicopters coming over my place, because uh, I worked nights, worked seven at night to seven in the morning in Vietnam, so. So what are living conditions like? Actually, you know, compared to Many many GIs. Ours was great because we had we had little cubbies. It was a wood, old wooden barracks that were broken up by little sections, and it was it's almost like being a kid and you want to make walls in your fort. 
that's sort of how it was. And you had, you know, it had screen windows. Uh, it had a door on your thing, but it, it was uh, you know, not secure. You know, you don't have anything there that you're gonna lose. I had, I ended up buying an acoustic guitar to keep busy, and uh, that would never get stolen. But you know, just it was. Uh, you, you sleep at night, and the cockroaches will run over your body. You know, it's no big deal. You could hear. I could hear them at night. They'd be chewing or whenever I'm. I'm actually. You sleep. You sleep during the day when you. I work at night. Seven. And, Seven at night to seven in the morning, and then I go to the chow hall, and I come. And that was probably to get to get to sleep. I probably drink a beer or two, just get tired, and then probably I still get tired and drink a beer. So what was it like where you worked? I mean, well, we ran, we ran. Um, I balanced loads with the load masters. The, these big planes, C-141s, the C-130s, 123s, all these. They carry things from. Thailand and all North, North, North Vietnam and all that kind of stuff. But you balance loads with the load masters, they give you a bunch of paperwork with each pallet with their contents and their weights. And you'd have to, I'd give them to the guys because I was running the shop and they'd type up all these punch cards and they would run them through the. I was running IBM then. I thought, oh, good, I got IBM experience, but it was a punch card accounting machine. It's basic, you know, basically an adding machine. On, as, First, one of the first computers, so it wasn't great com computer experience, but uh, yeah, we balanced loads with them, everything from pineapples to bombs, you know, and uh, you know, they, then they come back. Well, this isn't going to balance. So take this out, and this and this, and this, and we do it again. So you got to, you know, you got to see a few uh, load masters and people. You never really got close to anybody because there was too many people coming through. Did you ever like to see 130s? Did you ever load them with GIs or anything like that? That wasn't our job. No, ours okay. was all cargo. Our, just all cargo. That's more like at Long Bend, I think, is where they did most of that. Yeah, they were. You know, they that would be in another another area. Yeah, you know, what in out of out of Vietnam? I'm not sure if they probably had it, but not not in our station, right? I mean, not in our. Did location. you stay there your whole tour? And you were there for how long? I was there for, I, I was supposed to, when I got to Vietnam, they were given six months early out to us. Oh, good. Well, it got to me and it was two, two months, you know, two week early out. And then when I took my physical, I said, I want my records. It's because you're going to lose them. No, no, we got, I said, I need my records. They wouldn't give them to me. So got to uh, California. And well, when you were there, did you... Did you ever have any incoming or anything like that? Oh yeah, there was always rockets. We, uh, not always. It was wasn't bad, but when, when I was there from seventy one to seventy two, um, the rocket situation in in Tonson wasn't wasn't every night, you know. But you'd get the whistles, you know, the sirens and stuff, and then some we'd have to jump underneath the desk and throw flak jackets on top of ourselves and stuff like that. But uh, Thankfully, we weren't in any firefights, and there wasn't any, any border breaches that got close to us. Okay. One of the, well, no, I, I got to tell you another funny thing. Um, in Tonsonu, they, you know, they got the base exchange and all that kind of stuff. I was walking, walking to the base exchange, and one day, and all of a sudden, this jeep comes driving by, and guess who's in it? Tommy Conway. So I scream out, hey, Tommy! He stops the jeep. He says, what are you doing here? I said, the same thing you're doing. <laughs> so we talked probably for five minutes, ten minutes. But and funny, Tom Conway was a local Argyle. Yeah, he was, he, he was, he, he was a year older than me. I grew up with him. I played sports with him. And he was a, uh, a cop when I got older, you know, after I got MP? out of the yeah, yeah, he was an MP in, in, the, uh, in the Army. So, And the funny thing, I, never, I thought about it later. When I never got a hold of his address or he never got a hold of mine, so we never did touch again. But uh, I didn't know. I got. I got to. You know. I met some people even from Korea. I, was, I used to. He used to tell me stories after he got off the border, uh, protecting stuff. But, uh, oof, yeah, it was interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you spent uh, just under a year there, then. Yeah. Okay. Then. Then. Is there anything you, while you were in Vietnam you'd wish you'd have done different? Oh. No. I. You know. I. I was engaged to be married. I uh, I went to town a few times, and I took I took a lot of pictures with slides, you know, because I was I had a, uh, a camera about there, and uh, 
but the thing is, no, the slides is hard to hard to get a picture out of. You got to you send them in, and they charge you an arm and a leg. But uh, you know, I wish I'd have had a better camera setup or something, but I could have some memories of it. And mm -hmm. uh, but other than that, you know, uh, I uh, I was planning to get married when I came back. Cause I was wasn't looking for any companionship or none of that stuff. You saw enough of your friends or, or people you knew that. One other question, Jim. What was the food like where you're at? Actually, you know, GI food isn't bad. Um, breakfast, you got. Did, did you have like a place where you went to eat? Well, there's, a, there's a BX. You mean, you mean a chow hall. You go to the chow hall. Oh, that brings up an interest. We go to chow hall. You know, you go there. Go for, go there for early morning breakfast, and you get you know whatever you know not ever whatever you want. But there are scrambled eggs and. Uh, Egg sandwiches were big, and stuff like that. But uh, one time we came came to work in, at, uh, at night, and all of a sudden we see a, a box of frosting, frosted cardboard boxes got meat in it, steaks. I said, What's that? He says, Well, there was a, uh, a refrigerator truck that over overheated today, and it was going to go to Thailand to the officers' club. And he said they don't they had they got rid of a bunch of meat because they didn't know how much. Uh, was uh, spoiled and he said they don't know how much they took so we got an extra one. <laughs> so we got an extra box too so we brought our, our box to the barracks and we had another box we brought it to Chow Hall and we got, got some, got a gross eggs for, for swap and then so we had eggs and ham or eggs and steak for a few days, well, like a day and all of a sudden we heard the Office of Special Investigation was looking for this stuff. <laughs> So we ate like pigs for what two or three days, because you we each of us had a little hot plate. I mean, not everybody we have a hot plate, and you, you make a you know, cook a steak in there or an mm -hmm. egg or something. And uh, it was, it's the biggest thing I ever did that was probably illegal. <laughs> but, but it was uh, it, we could have made that last for a month, you know. But no, we had somebody had to spread the rumor and scare the heck out of us. So. Now you're done with Vietnam, yep. and, and you got problems. on the Freedom Bird. Yeah, I came home, went to... Um, when you got in the air on that Freedom Bird, was it a little exciting, or...? Oh, you're happy to get home, my God, you know. You're, um, you're flying back to the to the States, you're coming back to the, your country, your friends, your your, your girlfriend, your, you know, everybody there, and I got home. And, Saw Dad and Mom, and I, I, I was going to get married in a month after that, and Dad was like, why are you leaving so quick? He says, well, I'm getting married in a month. He said, why, why are you rushing things? Said, well, were you were you out of the Army now, or Air was, Force now? I got out, that was it. When you came, when you landed, yeah, you, that you, was, you I, actually, there was mustered a, up? There was um, a month or two of reserve. I didn't have to do anything, but I had a couple of... of um, I think the actual date, I should look at my DD-214, the actual discharge date was from active duty, but I think there might have been a carryover of a month or something for the reserves, but I didn't have to do anything for that. So you're just under four years? Oh no, I was over four years. You were over four years? Yeah, because I, I started in September of 68, and uh, before I went, physically, Air Force, uh, from November to November of 71 to 72. But I started, uh, I signed up in September, so it was a couple months extra. Uh, but as far as I was concerned, it was just a four years Air Force. What was your rank when you got out? Um, E5. E5? Master's, or staff, staff Sergeant. Okay. But, uh, which is pretty good at the time, actually. So what did you fly into? Where, where did you come into from so Vietnam? For, for, okay, California. For, I can't remember the name of the... Of the uh, was it Oakland, was it? Yes. Oakland? It was Oakland. Yeah. Okay. I can't remember the name of the base, but it was, it was the Oakland, Oakland site. And that's, when I came in there, they lost my, lost my, or lost all my papers. They had to hang on to me for a whole week to give me my physical. So a two week early out turned into a one week early out. And uh, only saving grace there was, uh, I had an uh, aunt and uncle in, in Garden Grove, uh, California, who I went and flew to there, see them while I was waiting for things to get put together, and we went to Disneyland. <laughs> so, so did you have to, did you have to fly in your Class A's then? Yeah. Yep. And how are you treated? 
Um, I didn't have a, a real negative experience, and nobody, nothing like today. You know, you're just another person. I never got dissed. I never got spit on, or, and I was lucky that way. But, yeah. but when when you got home, you know, everybody's like, "Well, I want to get back in the mainstream here." So you know, you just got to work or got to do what you got to do. So what did you do when you got home? Actually, you know, I got married in Massachusetts, and uh, and we moved back to to Twin Cities. My my, I was gonna go to Fargo. That's my idea. I'll go to Fargo. Dad said you better stop in the Twin Cities. I stopped in Twin Cities, and I, in, uh, in a couple by the end of we got married in November, end of December, but before Christmas, I started working at First Bank of St. Paul. And, so, uh, so you got married in Massachusetts? Yeah, that's where my wife's from. You folks come out there? And Mom and Dad and my sister Jean were there, and I had an aunt and uncle uh, come okay. out there too. But they were in, they were in Florida. They were in Florida when they came out. They came to came up and, and were at the wedding. But that was nice. Yeah. But uh, no, you know, I came back when I got out of the service. Came and worked the first bank and then uh, worked first the, bank in first bank St. Paul, okay. Minnesota, and then I progressed there, you know, to computer service sales. And after about seven years, I think I went to uh, where did I go to? I think I went to uh, com uh, well, uh, I went to com to a place called uh, the Service Bureau Company. It, was, it used to be owned by by uh, IBM. So you stayed in computers after yep. you got it. So you you. I used my my, my education to, to and then well, actually when I got out of the service I I started on a college at night. I worked full time and I went to college three quarter time. For, seemed like seemed like ten years, but I got <laughs> I got my associate. I did Invergrove Heights. who didn't let me to use my previous credits. They said, "Well, you want to get a." Two-year college here, you got to have your credits all from here. So I, it was close. And I got my associates, my my bachelor's, and almost my master's from Mankato Extension. But I ran out of credits from the Air Force, and so I didn't go anymore there. You know, but it was like my wife would be home with the kids for quite a while. <laughs> you go to work, and then you go right to school. How many kids did you have? I've got three. Matthew's the oldest, and Kenzie's the middle, and Michael's the younger one. They're all in her. 40s. <laughs> yeah. So. so, anything you look back on that uh, you wish you'd have done different? Or? I, I, I really don't have any regrets. I mean, I, I think you, you talk to most most vets, they'll, they'll say that, hey, that was that was a good time, and if it was that age again, I'd do it again, and I would. I mean, uh, it's a good time to grow up, a good time to, to learn how to be a man on your own. And, and, and well, you know, we came from a, our, our dads were all in the service, and most of them. And it was like you had that sense of, of loyalty to their country and God and country. And, and it was, you wanted, to, you know, you had to have that in, 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 inside of you. You wanted to do that. So it, it kind of came natural. But I mean, even. Even when I was, you know, my best friend, Lynn, you know, he got killed in, in Vietnam. And uh, I called him before he went over. I called him, he's in Argo. I said, well, you know, we, we, were, we were together a lot. Classmates. So, yeah, and he was my second cousin. So I said, well, you know, when we get out, we're going to do this. And he said, Jimmy, he says, I don't think I'm coming back. And I said, no, come on, Lynn. No, he says, I really don't think I'm going to make it back. So I, I, I said, well, you know, I, I, I'm going to pray for you. I said, I, 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 we've got such big plans. We want to do different things as kids, you know. And, and uh, uh, he died in, in Tonson, or in Vietnam, in uh, Hamburger Hill. So uh, I flew back for that. And Jim, Jim Helberg, my neighbor across the street, was was the next hill. He, he, he brought his body back. And that was uh, it's still hard for me to talk about. You know, it's it's what we went through. It's yep. What we went through. Yep. I was lucky. I really lucky. You know, in my whole career, that it worked out the way it worked. Like it's, you don't have to be in battle to die. You know, 
if you if you if you if your plane's coming over, they can have a problem. You can get hit in a vehicle. You know, you know the good Lord is with you. That's, that's all you can hope for. But you're young and think you're going to live forever. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're you know, we're still young in our minds. That's the thing. Yeah. You think. So I think you're 24 years old, which yeah. uh, the body doesn't want to react that way. But <laughs> okay, anything else you want to add, Jim? No, I. Uh, I want to thank you for doing all these interviews, and you're uh, you're, you're you're a good friend of mine, and I, I knew your brother, and you and we kind of grew up together. Uh, yep. I remember actually I remember staying at your house when I was a kid one night at least and with a big family, yep. always happy and plenty of food. And what a beautiful place! Thank you, Jim. I thank you for doing this interview. I know you're well known around Argyle. You're there for every meet your neighbor day. It seems like I try to be. I yep. try to be. Getting older, you gotta, you gotta. It's a, it's a, it's a place to be. So. Yep. Thank you for doing this interview, and thank you for your service. Thank you, sir.